Hi, I'm Mike Englehart. One problem that people encounter in circuit simulation is obtaining models or devices of semiconductors that they want to try in their circuits. I have tried to fix this by creating tools to make it easy to author new semiconductor models. You can make a model in just a few minutes. Let me show you how it works. So you launch QSpice and under File, you'll see Model Generator. And there are three options here. There's a generator to make a diode model, a JFET model, and a MOSFET model. Let's make a power MOSFET model. This is actually a separate application. So once you launch it, you don't need to keep QSpice running anymore. And you simply fill out the information, it will generate a model. Let's make a model for an alpha, semicon alpha omega self semiconductor model. I have a data sheet here. And we just fill out this form. So the model name will be not dot, but a O N S six, 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 zero five. The company will be alpha and Omega, uh, the rating information. So current rating is 120 amps voltage rating here is 60 volts. Now the total gate charge uh, is best to get that off the electrical engineering, uh, uh, electrical characteristics section. We're looking for something with the units of nanocoulomb. And it has it characterized at 10 volt and uh, logic level. Let's, let's characterize this thing for logic level use. So four and a half volt gate charge is a uh, four and a half volt uh, VDS is gonna have typically 20 nanocoulomb. Good. Gate resistance, that'll have, we're looking for something with the units of ohm. Here it is, 1.6. RDS on, again, we'll look at uh, the logic level rate uh, point. Um, da, da, da. Where is RDS? Milliohm we're looking for. Here we are. Four and a half volts, 20 amps. It's 3.9. And that was at four and a half volt. And the current was 20 amps. Good. Now these next two parameters, you guess. And if you don't like the model, you can try remaking the model with the different uh, values. But basically, um, uh, these values are usually be good enough. Most of the RDS on is not due to the channel, but actually due to the lead frame and the bond wires and the distance from the pads to the channel. Um, <clears throat> the bigger the MOSFET, the larger the fraction, if that is not due to the channel. Let's set that to, um, I will leave it at 75%. For larger MOSFETs, you might, might go to 80 to 85 or 90%, but 75% uh, will be about right. Now this is the um, ratio of, um, RD to RS, we'll leave that at 50%. Technology means that it's a silicon, there's wide band gap devices, but the tech, now this is a silicon device. Reverse recovery charge, um, here it's 50, here it is, reverse recovery charge, 53 nanocoulomb. And um, we need to know the current that that's at because the Reverse recovery charge is proportional to the forward current, and that's done at 20 amps. And then we need to know the zero biased output capacitance. That means the um, the drain source capacitance when the gate or in the gate is shorted to the gate when the gate is shorted to the source. Let's find um, some capacitance curves here. Here they are. Good. So COSS, and we're looking for the value near zero volts. So that looks like it might be. Um, 22.6 nano farad. This is the point here I'm looking for. So, okay, that page is done. Now let's digitize the output characteristics. This is the plot we're looking for. And we're gonna digitize this curve. So I like to make this plot as large on the screen as possible so I can digitize it more accurately. And to digitize it, I have to say what the 
range is of the plot and where the origin is in the upper right hand corner. So let's do all that. So this goes from zero to 100 volt. Okay, so that's zero to, I make this 100 volt. So that axis is set up correct. The, it's, it's a linear range at a log, so you would leave that unchecked. The horizontal range goes from zero to five volts, also linear. So we leave the log unchecked and we make this five volts. So now the axis information is there, but now we have to say which pixel is the origin and which is the upper right hand corner. So we press the lower left button. You notice as I move the mouse, it's reading out the pixel that I'm pointing at. So if I point at this curve, you see I get a cursor that looks like an I beam. If I point at the other um, corner, it looks like an arrow. It's hard to tell exactly which pixel you're pointing at. To um, work around that problem, the model generator will give you a crosshair cursor, but you have to capture that cursor when you're pointing at the model generator. That means that you have to point at the model generator, press the left mouse button down, and now this cursor is gonna be the cursor no matter what I point at. And you see it's a, it's a x orient cursor and I can precisely point at the pixel that I'm interested in. So that's the origin. I come back to the screen, mouse down again, and I get my cursor back. And I point to the upper right hand corner, release the mouse. And it, so now this is precisely calibrated. So I need to say, um, I need to pick two curves. I need to plot, uh, enter three points on the curve. There's three candidate, candidate plots I could use. I'm gonna use these two here. I usually don't use a output characteristics with a low VGS because at lower VGS, the MOSFET can deviate from square law because of subthreshold conduction. So I'm gonna use the three volt and the 3.2 volt curves. I have to tell it which curves I'm using. So it's three volts and 3.2. Good, now I enter these three points and it'll, it'll automatically cycle from um, point to point. So I press this button, you see it's reading out what point, what pixel I'm pointing at, point at the plot, mouse down. And I like to pick a point that's clearly in saturation, but I like it to be as far to the left as possible. So I get the best slope, I get the most accurate slope so I can accurately characterize the output impedance in saturation. So that's the point I will plot or enter. Come over here, I point at this curve, this point here. And now I want this point here. Okay, we press the button crunch. It makes the model for the output characteristics. And let's, uh, let's it has this also button called test. Let's press the test button and see how it did. So the test button actually makes a, um, a, a, a test fixture to extract this curve. And you'll notice if I plot the horizontal axes so that they line up, those points, those points are matched and uh, it has the right curve. The, there is a quasi-saturation region here, which looks different than the data sheet. The model generator won't try to model that. Uh, vendor data sheets, as often as not, don't have good enough curve trace data to be able to characterize that quasi-saturation region. The RDS on is correct. So the, the on resistance is correct and the saturation is correct, but in between the two, it's not a perfect match. Uh, now uh, we go to the body diode. We want to, we're looking for a plot that looks like this in the data sheet. And there it is. This is the body diode. And it's the same drill. You have to calibrate the, uh, enter the, say what kind of axes you're looking at and then enter the origin in the upper right-hand corner, and then put in a few data points. So the lower, okay, let's set up the axis. So this goes to 10 amps, and this is 10 microamps. The horizontal axis is zero to one volt. The horizontal axis is not logged, and the vertical axis is logged. So now I can calibrate the, enter the, well, the core, uh, first enter the origin, Now the upper right-hand corner. There. Now I can enter these points. For the nominal, we have to look at what temperature we're going to do these at. So it says 25 and 125. So that's 125. That's 25 degrees, and there's 125 degrees. Uh, we want three points of the uh, nominal temperature and two points of the high temperature. So we press one. We enter this point. We enter. 
that point. There, let's crunch. Now we have the complete DC model. Let's try that. Um, uh, there is the, um, the fact that this curve looks like this curve means we uh, correctly digitized the body diode. Okay, now we have one more uh, curve to plot, or one more curve to digitize, and that's the gate capacitance. Let's go to this gate capacitance curve. So this is the plot of the amount of uh, what gate voltage you get to after having put so much charge on the gate. Uh, and um, we have to say what, what axis, you know, again, set up the axes. This goes to zero to 10 volts. Let's make that 10 volts there. And it goes from zero to 50 nanocoulomb. So we'll go from zero to 50 nanocoulomb. Let's say where the, uh, uh, let's calibrate the origin and upper right hand corner. And now we enter these three points. Oh, we should do the, yeah, we have to set this up. VDS is 30 volts and the current be 20 amps. Okay, and now we can, uh, um, as long as we enter this data before we press punch, uh, crunch, it's, uh, it's good. Anyway, point one, we want three points. So point one is this, you try to pick where, where the inflections are, where they, you try to pick the point where straight line ext uh, extrapolations would meet at a pixel. Begin here, let's look about there. Okay, now we press crunch. That's actually our complete model. The model is done. We've got our, our model. We can test the gate charge. So we press the test button. And indeed, this looks rather like that. Okay, so that's all there is to it. We have a model of this MOSFET. Um, let's try it out. Well, I'll show you how to use this model now in a simulation. Let's start QSpice. The model is actually on the clipboard, but let's be sure. Let's highlight this whole test. Type control C, go over to QSpice, control V, and it will say, shall I make you a symbol? Yes. And there it is. You're ready to simulate with that MOSFET. And that's how easy it is to make a MOSFET model directly from the data sheet. Um, I hope that you find this valuable because it should save you a lot of time and you'll have reliable models that would have what you need modeled in them. Thank you very much.